Hello everybody, uh, this is a quick uh, demonstration to show how you can use local storage to save uh, complicated data to deal with the problem of local storage, which is, while local storage is great, it's useful, it's a way to, to persistently save data for your web apps in the browser across user sessions and across tabs. Um, but the downside is, is it only stores strings? Well, sometimes it's a downside. While the simplicity is nice, it gives us one big issue. What about complicated data, complex data, like arrays or objects? How can we store that in local storage since it only lets us save strings? If we don't do anything and just try to save data in local storage, arrays just get converted into comma separated values and an object uh, gets converted into this very useless object object in some brackets as a string, which of course, when we try to pull that out of local storage to do something with it, we've lost pretty much all our useful data at that point. So here's the trick. We're gonna use two functions that are built into JavaScript. Uh, JSON.stringify, which is a function that can take an object or an array and convert that or serialize it into something called JavaScript object notation. So basically right here, when we call JSON.stringify and we pass in an object or an array, it's going to serialize that into a string using JavaScript object notation, and that way we don't lose our data and we don't end up with the useless object object. So here's a quick example. Um, here we're making a variable named veggies with three strings in it, it's an array. We would like to save that in local storage, so we're gonna call local storage.setItem, and then we're gonna give it a key of veggies, and then we're gonna use json.stringify which is going to convert our array into JavaScript object notation as a string. And of course you can store strings in local storage, which is fantastic. So now that we've, we've created a string in local storage using JSON object notation, when we would like to fetch or read that data from local storage, uh, we need to use the reversing function for that, which is json.parse. json.parse is a function which takes a string in JavaScript object notation and converts it back into a JavaScript object or array. All right, so let's see a real live example here. I have, uh, let me go ahead and open this up using a live server extension in VS Code. So we have a basic form here, has some data about a car in it, use the little bootstrap, nothing special. Um, now it doesn't work yet. Right, so we just have the HTML for this form. Um, and if we go into Chrome here, you know, we can type in whatever we want. Let's say our vehicle make is Subaru and our model is a Forester and the vehicle color is red. We click submit, nothing happens yet. What we'd like to do is take this data, save it in local storage and then Anytime we come to the page, we want our web app to first check and see if there is any car data in local storage. And if there is, pull it out and update these inputs um, so that way they retain their state. So let's make this work. Um, if we look at our index.html, what we see here is we got a little bootstrap, some basic HTML for our form using bootstrap. We have fields for uh, make, model, and color, and a submit button. Now we've linked up this external JavaScript file at app.js, and if we go look at app, uh, we just got a teeny bit of starter code here, so we're querying the DOM to get our car form, right? So we're getting element by ID, car-form, and if we look here, our form has an ID of car-form. And we are listening for the submit event and we don't want the page to reload, which is the default browser behavior. So we're gonna call prevent default. So now what we wanna do is a couple of things. We're gonna need to get our values from the form inputs. And then we need to check if they're valid. We're not gonna do any serious validation here. We're just gonna make sure that the user has entered something. And then we're going to save them in local storage using the technique we just discussed. Once we have that working, we wanna do the other part, which is anytime the page loads up, uh, we wanna check local storage for the card data and then update the values in the form. So we're gonna go ahead and begin first with our getting the values from the form inputs. Let's just console log those. So if we pull our index.html, let's make it so we can see both at the same time. 
we're going to need to get the make, the model, and the vehicle color. So let's go ahead and do that. I want to console log the values of each. So I'm going to console.log. Um, actually, let's make a variable. So we'll make var make, and then we're going to get our value that way. So we have an ID on our input of make. So I'm going to go ahead and say document.get element by ID make, and we're going to get its value. Right now we'll console log that and just make sure that we are indeed getting the make when I click submit. So we'll say Subaru submit. Uh oh, did I save? I did save. Try that one more time. Subaru submit. Hmm. Well, that's odd. Sure, why we're not seeing anything on the console. Okay, let's do a little more debugging here. Seems that my submit function might not be running. Ah, submit function is not running. Ah, there's the problem. My button's type. Jeez. Got to make sure that's the submit button. Now it should work. And there we go. Okay, great. So now that we've got that resolved, let's continue on. Get rid of all our little checks here. All right, so now that we know that we can get the make, let's proceed to get the model... and our um, color. And there we go, make Subaru model Forester color red. So we're successfully getting the data. And the last thing we want to do is make sure that if any of those were not complete, let's just go ahead and bail out of our function. So we're going to say, um, first we're going to trim the white space. So we're going to say dot value dot trim like so. We're going to add that to these both these lines. And that's just going to trim off any trailing or leading white space. So spaces, new lines, etc. And now we're going to go down here and add our condition. So we're going to say if not make or not model or not color. Let's just return to end the function. Um, normally I do some more robust validation and we would probably want to display some sort of pop up to the user or some uh, display some alerts on the page next to each form to indicate that they weren't uh, correctly filled out. But really, we just want to show off how you can store objects in local storage. So we're just going to keep going. Next up, um, we want to save this data in local storage as an object. So I'm going to make a car object here. Um, so we're going to save our car 
info we'll call it and it's going to be an object and i know there's shorter ways of writing this if you uh, are familiar with our es6 syntax uh, but i'm going to stick with javascript that will be compatible with much older browsers without needing any extra help so we're going to say model model and color color like so so we're going to get our car info and then we're going to go ahead and put that in local storage. So we're going to say local storage dot set item. We'll just call this car info. And then here's where the magic goes. So let's just see what happens if I don't first use that JSON stringify function. So here we are going to get our car data from the form. Make sure that it's all been filled out at least a little bit. We're going to create our object for storing our car info and then we're going to stash that in local storage with the key of car info so let's run that and see what we get we're going to submit and now if i go to application local storage we're going to see that car info got saved as this rather useless object object which of course i won't be able to use to get our car data when we come back when we return to the page. So what I need to do is take car info here and first I need to pass it to JSON stringify or JSON yeah, stringify, there we go. And pass in our car info object. And now if we try this again, take our form here and we fill it out and submit. And now if we go look at our local storage, we can see that it's actually stored our object in J what's called JavaScript object notation or JSON. And I will be able to then when I come back, get the color, make a model back. So that's going to be our next step. We're going to go up to the top of the page. And since I need to update our elements, again, it might be a good idea to actually make these global variables for now. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make global variables for each of these elements in the page because I'm going to need to use them both down here when I'm getting the data, but I'm also going to need to use it when I'm pulling the data from local storage and then updating those inputs. So let's go ahead and do that now. That's going to be our make input element, our model input element, and our color input element. Great. All right, so now um, I need to check local storage for car data. So we're going to say var car info equals local storage dot get item car info. Now remember, this is still a string. So if I tried to console log car info dot make for instance it's not going to work yet because I, I i'm going to get this object but it's still a string it's still in json object notation so if i reload my page right now and we go look in the console we're going to see that that logged undefined because if we do type of on car info we're going to see that it's still a string so Whenever we store data using JSON stringify, when it gets read, we want to convert that back. So instead, I'm going to say, I'm going to take my function here that gets the string, put some parentheses around it, so that way I can call json.parse, like so. And now, let's see if I can console log the make. And there we go, it says Subaru. Fantastic. Okay, so now that we figure out how to get our car info, now we can go to our make input. So I want to say make input dot value equals car info dot make. And then we're going to change this one to model. And we'll change this one to color, like so. So let's see if that works. Hey, there we go. See if I reload the page, uh, I have my data in local storage in there, which is awesome. 
Let's do one more thing. What about the first time a user comes to a page, right? They won't have had anything in local storage. So I'm going to clear local storage out and refresh the page one more time to see what happens. So, oh, so the problem is we have a, a nothing in local storage, but I went ahead and wrote code that assumes that there will be something in local storage and that fails, right? Because if a user's coming for our first time, there's no way for something to be in local storage unless I make my code at it. So what I'm going to do here is after calling parse, if we console log, let's just go ahead and comment these three lines out for a moment. If we console.log car info, we're going to see that car info is null when there's nothing in local storage. So what I want to do is say if not car info. Then let's go ahead and make, um, actually, rather than if not car info, let's say if car info. So if car info is a truthy JavaScript value, so something other than undefined, null, false, zero, or empty string. If it's not one of those values, then this evaluates to true. So I only want to set those values if I have car info. So I'm going to put them behind this conditional. And now if we try this again, we can see that there's no error and let's just make sure everything works. I clicked submit. Now if I reload the page, we can see that our data is persisting because if we go to our developer tools here to application and look under local storage, we're going to see that car info is successfully saved in local storage. So that's how you can use local storage to persist data that is complicated, that is complex, such as objects and arrays and uh, any other data structure that's more complex than a simple string. You can use json.stringify and json.parse.